What's the most supernatural experience you've ever had? When I was 15, I woke up in the middle of the night and saw this strange spotlight appear on my wall. It was a circle made up of a bunch of bright circular dots within it. It came on strong, then rotated 90 degrees, and then turned off. It was so surreal, because the light was extremely bright, and yet it was also focused on that one spot on my wall. When I woke up the next morning I couldn't get the image out of my head, but I just assumed I must have dreamed it. My sister and I were talking over breakfast, and she said, I had this dream last night my entire room suddenly lit up with these circular dots floating around my room. I got really excited, that actually happened. I woke up, and saw it too. My sister froze, how is that possible? My blinds are completely shut. Chills to this day. My remote once jumped off the TV by itself, the old school box type of television, when I was watching with my girlfriend. Didn't fall or slide off, we actually saw it take a leap, as if somebody threw it. We both just sat there being really confused before even questioning it out loud. I've posted about this before, but when I was about 9 years old, 1995, in the middle of a bright summer day, I went to the refrigerator to get a popsicle. Suddenly a roughly teenage looking guy, with long brown hair, wearing a beige turtleneck and red plaid bell bottoms, turned around the corner into the hallway to my left, then vanished from toe to head as I looked at him. Told no one about it for years, until after my mother mentioned meeting the, now grown, kids who lived in the house before us, who asked her if she'd seen the bell-bottom ghost. My best friend's dad, who was a second father to me, came to me in a dream and told me to tell my best friend that he loved her and that he was sorry. I woke up to my cell phone ringing to find it was my best friend absolutely hysterical telling me that he finally passed away from sclerosis. I sobbed all day. He was a drunk our whole lives but it still hurt. About a year ago my cow walker and I went to get coffee at a new coffee shop that opened up by our work. I was dealing with a lot of anxiety over my future. Anyway, while in line there was a woman in front of me. She was giving her order when she stopped mid-sentence and looks behind her to see me. She turns back around gives the barista her order. After I give my order she comes up to me and hey, I know this is going to sound weird, but do you know a man named Jim? Her words took me off guard, because Jim was my grandpa. He died of cancer. He didn't live in the same state as I did, so I doubt he and this woman would have ever met him. I told her yes, he was my grandpa. And she told me that he wanted me to know that I needed to stop worrying, because everything was going to be okay. It me crying in the middle of the coffee store in front of my bewildered cowwalker and a couple of strangers. My grandfather loved my grandmother a lot. He would constantly tell her she was beautiful and would always do embarrassing things to make her laugh. Unfortunately she died a few months after being diagnosed with cancer. This affected him a lot, but as time went on he came to terms with it. My grandfather lived on for another 18 years. In his final years he developed really bad Alzheimer's that led him to forget that his wife had passed away and would often call for her or ask us where she went. We'd explain to him that she had passed away but it always made him distressed and upset so we decided to tell him she'll be back soon every time he asked where she was. A month or so before my grandfather passed away, I was at his house with my mother and we were all sitting in the living room. My grandfather who was seated on his chair all of a sudden starts frantically asking us where my grandmother was. We calmly explained to him that she'll be back soon and she was just out doing some chores. Unlike most times, he was being persistent on wanting to see her. We explained to him again that she'll be back soon, but he kept getting more persistent. He started to frantically call for her. He screamed her name as loud as he could over and over again until out of nowhere every single door and window in the room flung open all at once. Now we could say that it was just wind but all the doors and windows in the house had secure locks and would stay locked at all times since my grandfather would wander off or forget to lock his doors. All the doors and windows burst open and at that same second my grandfather who was facing the front door says what took you so long? 
I've been waiting for you, with a smile. My mother and I didn't see the person my grandfather talked to, but I'm sure that he saw his wife. I used to do pest control. Went to a customer's business for the first time. As I walked in the office I noticed some pictures that were supposed to be hanging on the wall were on the ground and then saw some papers which looked like they had been thrown and scattered off a desk. I picked everything up so I could apply treatment to the floorboards and surrounding rooms. I then went to treat the only restroom in the office. I simply knocked on the door as a courtesy as I always do before entering any restroom. There was no reply for nobody was in there so I went and applied treatment to the restroom and I closed the door behind me. As I walked away from the door I know I heard somebody grab the door handle, twist it open and open the door. I turned around and looked to see nobody behind me but a door swinging open. The hair on my neck instantly stood up and I put two and two together. I grabbed my shit and ran downstairs. The receptionist saw me and started laughing. She asked me if I had met their little friend upstairs. When I was 16, an uncle, dad's brother, passed unexpectedly. Weeks later, I had a dream about him, and he told me to quit smoking cigarettes. It was way more involved, but it's been 20 plus years, so I don't remember the rest. A month or so later, I mentioned the dream to my parents and my dad started crying, got up and walked away. Apparently he dreamed of talking to his brother too, and he told my dad that he, uncle, needed to talk to me. When I was between the ages of 4 to 6, I used to see a little blonde boy through this mirrored armoire in my parents' bedroom. The armoire was big and wooden, but had mirrored accents and mirrors running all the way around the base. If I laid on the carpet in front of it and looked into the mirrors on the bottom, sometimes I'd see a little blonde boy in a red sweater in the corner of the room far away and a little distorted, but still very clear. He would sit with his back to me, looking out the windows to the backyard. I don't remember ever seeing his face. I don't think I saw him many times, but I do remember his image very clearly. In my little kid mind I thought I invented this super neat mirror trick by myself, so I tried to get my parents to see it too. They always refused, and my mom especially would get super mad at me for asking. I stopped seeing the boy when I stopped playing in their bedroom as much and new mirrors shouldn't work like that. When I got older I chalked it up to my overactive kid brain. Didn't think much of it tbh. Years and years later, when I was an adult and long after my parents had sold that house, my mom asked me about the armoire out of the blue then told me that she used to see the little boy too. Not in the mirrors, but sometimes just out the corners of her eyes, like she'd be cooking and catch a glimpse of blonde hair pass by her hips, at a kid's height, and occasionally in dreams. It didn't happen too often but just enough to deeply freak them out. So when I mentioned seeing the same little boy, my mom was just terrified herself. There were other strange stuff in that house but this was 100% the most vivid I remember. Not sure if this counts as supernatural, but here it goes. The summer after I graduated high school I got a job delivering pizza to help save money for college. I had a lot of run-ins with some pretty weird characters but nothing like what happened this one night. It was a Friday night. We deliver pizzas until 3am Fridays and Saturdays. It was 2.45am and we were preparing to close when our manager said we got a call for a delivery at place almost 20 minutes away. Being the desperate for money teenager I was, I offered to do the delivery. This was before smartphones had GPS, so I used a Garmin. I plugged in the address and off I went. The Garmin took me deep into the backwoods of rural Texas. I finally arrived to my destination. The house looked like something in a horror movie. Big wooden two-story house with no lights on. The first thing I noticed about the house was that the front door was wide open. I sat in my car for a few minutes debating on turning back and claiming no one was home. Something just didn't feel right. I needed the tip money, so I sucked it up and approached the house. When I got to the open front door I didn't enter. Instead I knocked. No one answered. I knocked again as loud as I could. No response. I finally got the courage to say something. Pizza delivery. Anyone home? There was a few seconds of silence until I heard a weird voice upstairs. 
I walked in the house and could barely make out my surroundings because it was so dark. I make it to the bottom of the stairs and look up into the dark abyss. Again I said, pizza delivery. The voice spoke again, come upstairs. I can't get out of bed. Something was very off about this voice. It didn't sound normal. The best I can describe it is, if a dog somehow learned to talk, but still had trouble pronouncing human words. The hair stood up on my neck. There was no fucking way I was going up there. The tip wasn't worth it. I placed the pizza at the bottom of the stairs and shouted, I'm leaving it here at the bottom of the stairs. Have a good night. As I turned away the voice said, no, come upstairs. I can't get out of bed. I replied, I'm sorry I'm not even allowed to enter someone's home on the job. You'll have to come get it. I heard some loud banging from upstairs with the voice shouting at full volume, come upstairs. I can't come out of bed. The voice shouted this over and over again, like it was a recording on a loop. The banging got louder and louder as the voice got louder. I noped the fuck out of there at full speed. To this day I have no idea what the fuck happened in that house. Two stories. I was 14 or 15, sitting in our downstairs living room, while my parents slept in their bedroom upstairs. It was around 1am or so, and I was on the computer playing a video game. The only light in the house comes from my computer screen and a lamp that's opposite me, by the couch. Suddenly, I hear a man's voice say my name very plainly. Not a whisper, not a yell. Just a mid-level call that sounds like it's coming from the darkened hall. I assume it's my dad, because sometimes he comes down the stairs and calls at me from the lower step to tell me to get to bed, or whatever. I get up and go into the hallway, but no one's there. I look up the stairs and call, lightly, ah to my dad, but then I hear his telltale snores from upstairs. A bit weirded out, I go back to the computer. A minute later, I hear the voice call say my name again, but this time it's as if the person speaking is right beside me and the voice is a bit more assertive. I jump and look in the direction of the voice. Nothing is there. Suddenly, the lamp across the room starts to hum. The light flickers, and the light bulb explodes. I got pretty unnerved at that point. I turned on all the downstairs lights, cleaned up the burst bulb, and went upstairs to sleep. Second story. I was about 8 or 9, and was getting ready for bed in my room. I was sitting on my bed, and taking off my socks, when I suddenly got this overwhelming feeling, that I was being watched. I knew of the feeling, but had never experienced it myself. I felt for sure that something with bad intentions was standing over against the wall between my closet and my closed door, watching me. A feeling of terror washed over me, and I sat there for what felt like an hour, probably just a few minutes, staring at the floor, unable to move, paralyzed with fear. Eventually I mustered up the courage to look up, reasoning that what I was feeling was silly. I knew that once I looked up, and saw that nothing was there, the feeling would go away. It didn't. I looked up, and felt even more terrified. Nothing was there, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I had locked eyes with some malevolent invisible force. After another minute, frozen, unblinking, I stood and made my way slowly toward the presence. Trying to decide whether to bolt out the door, it was right beside it, or face it, I decided to approach it. Eventually, I felt as if I was face to face with whatever this thing was, and the feeling of a presence was as strong as ever. I raised my hand, paused, and then thrust it forward. I felt a bit surprised when my fist hit the wall. The feeling of being watched suddenly disappeared, and I felt alone again. I never had that feeling ever again. Thanks for watching, and share your stories. Don't forget to consider the idea to maybe think about potentially subscribing. Peace.